Yeah. Hey. Kick some knowledge with your partner, you can it spit your game. Kick some knowledge with your partner, you can spit your game. Kick some knowledge with your partner, you can spit your game. Kick some knowledge with your partner, you can spit your game. Legendary conversations people want to know. When you're on the way to greatness, what's the way to go? Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Spit Your Game podcast. Today, I got a Cleveland Eastside standout, Mississippi Dandy Dozen, 2011 McDonald's All American, 2011 Parade All American, two time first team uh, All SEC, and a 2014 second round pick in the NBA draft. I got my guy, Johnny O'Brien III. JOB, what's good, bro? Man, not much, man. Excited to be on, man. Uh, like I said, it's always a pleasure, you know, speaking with somebody from the hometown, chopping it up. So, Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. You know, we got to represent the Delta, man. We all in one, so you know how it is. But sure, sure. Yeah, so so what you currently doing now, man? So currently, man, I'm playing um, still at it. Uh, I'm overseas in Japan, top league in Japan. Um, last year I was in China. Um, been uh, I've been in Euro League, been all over, um, playing, traveling the world, man. It's been exciting. Hey, that's good coming from a little old town from Cleveland, being able to explore the world, man. That's what's up. <laughs> no, nah, man, it's incredible, man. I, you know, I thank God every day for, you know, uh, putting that basketball in my hands. So, did you before we get started to your background? Did you ever did you ever have that feeling, man, that you'll be able to do something that you kind of dreamed of doing professionally? Yeah, man. I, I think, honestly, man, since, you know, since I was a kid, um, you know, I, I kind of knew, you know, I kind of knew what I wanted to be. Um, I knew I wanted to be, you know, a football player, a basketball player. Like, that was, that was, that was what I seen on TV, and that's what I was going to go for. So, Right. Uh, let's get to your background a little bit, man. Where you born and raised? So I was born, <clears throat> born and raised in Cleveland, but like right outside of Cleveland in this little, uh, everybody called it a mom's truck stop because it was a, uh, a little, uh, the, the, it was called mom's truck stop. And it was like a trailer, a bunch of trailer homes there, trailer park homes. And that's where I was raised at, um, very country rural. And uh, it was a lot of land, so we spent a lot of time outside, uh, a lot of time playing, like, uh, you know, the game, pick them up and kill them. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of 21. Um, yeah, man, so we just, you know, I grew up in that little that little pocket of the, the city, I guess. Okay, uh, you got any siblings? Yeah, so I got an uh, older sister. She's about nine years older. Then I got an older brother. Uh, who's about four years older. And then I got my cousin, <laughs> which may, might as well be my brother because everybody single with me is, uh, you know, Avis. So, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, like, those three pretty much uh, like my siblings. Yeah. Yeah, look, you better mention Avis. You know he'll, he'll give you a call if you don't hey, mention Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, any kids, man? Yeah, so I got uh, four kids, um, wife of four kids, man, married. Uh, fatherhood has definitely been uh, it's been eye opening, but uh, I love it. So. I progress on that, man. I I, okay. I I knew about three. I didn't know you had four. And uh, yeah, you, you, you got a one year old. Okay, okay, okay. So that's recently. Okay. Yeah. Um. Um. How, how long you been married? Who since twenty three? So going on seven years. Man. Yeah. Congrats yeah. on congrats on that, man. Congrats on that. Appreciate it. Um, but neighborhood growing up, man, how was it, man, growing up in your neighborhood? Uh, like I said, man, it was it was cool. My mom actually, we used to live in the city of Cleveland, and um, it was you know kind of rough for us because my mom worked all day, and um, the area where we lived at, you know, it was a lot of just different stuff going on, and and so it was just me and my brothers, and we were just kind of out exploring and getting into you know whatever god knows what so my mom actually moved us to you know she got enough money to you know buy buy a trailer home and so she actually moved us to the outer part just so we could be you know kind of away uh away from everything and and and, um and like i said i think you know being a blessing man it was a uh you know we were able to really get out and 
just explore, man. And just, just, I remember, you know, me, my cousin Avis, and whatever kids that was in that area, we would just be outside all day just playing sports. So, yeah. Hey, you got to make it look sun up, sun down, man. That's how it was. Oh, man. Sun yeah, up, you know how it is down. for sure. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Um, anything else you, you enjoy doing as a kid besides sports? Yeah. Um, man, I actually was into a lot of like, um, uh, cartoons. I was into like wrestling. Um, I, I was into like anime, like stuff like Dragon Ball Z, and, you know, all that different Gundam and all that different stuff. So like, I really enjoy, um, just kind of watching that as like, you know, to get away from some of the uh, but yeah, I would say just you know those things really just you know if you weren't out if you weren't outside playing, I I just love getting into uh, anime, wrestling, and movies and stuff like that. Okay, okay. Um, so what what age did you did you start playing sports? Uh, my mom used to sign me up from like I want to say like seven. Uh, she signed me up for baseball. And then basketball, and then football, and I just kind of circulated everything. Um, I, I guess until I chose basketball, but um, my mom signed us up just to keep us busy, you know, keep us out the street. And uh, so I, I played a little bit of everything growing up. Okay. Um, so who who did you look up to growing up, man? Uh. Man, it was a, a mixture of a few people, man. And um, um, when I was really young, when I was really young, man, because uh, my mom was by herself. So when I was really young, I would say, actually, my cousin Avis, man, he was like the first one because he was older than me. And um, and Avis, man, was like a hood legend <laughs> in terms of just like <laughs> he was one of the most athletic. You know, these dudes that I had ever seen, you know, that didn't really play sports, you know, uh, because of, you know, grades, whatever situation. But, um, you know, he would always, um, you know, when I was like eight, nine, ten, he would just grab me and be like, man, you on my team. Um, you know, so he was like kind of one of the first ones to like put that confidence in me, like, you know, like, you, you 10 years old, you playing against 15, 16, 17 year olds, whatever. So, he was kind of one of the first ones that was like, you know, you're kind of good enough. And then um, once I got older, um, you know, it was coaches like my high school coach, Coach Cotton. Um, it was really like a pops to me, man. Like he was one of the first, like meeting him was like the first time I seen like uh, what, what, what a hardworking man was, somebody that got up and like mowed the grass and, you know, taught class and then coached after and then like had a bus route and like, um, yeah. you know, yeah, like he was one of the first ones that like, you know, showed me right from wrong. Like, I remember going to his house. He had a big, nice house. He had the family, wife and kids. And that, that, and honestly, that was like, that was my first time seeing a guy so like well put together, you know, and um, yeah. so I instantly kind of gravitated toward him. And then he sprinkled in like my AU coach, Tundy Wade was like big. Uh, another guy, Eric Elston, was big, and then, um, and then being honest, man, like, um, another guy, BJ Ellis, Coach Ellis from Delta State. Um, I don't know if you know BJ, um, yeah, 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 he, yeah, 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 so BJ, yeah, BJ was, um, he used to always like <laughs> when I was in like ninth, 10th grade, he would just be like, Hey, man, come over here and play against my, my guys, you know, these guys grown man at the time and, you know uh so i'll be over there playing against them you know uh, playing against y'all really and that was my first time seeing like so that was my first time seeing like guys because you know you would hear all these stories about guys like jasper uh and you know different guys that could play throughout the delta and then right. a lot of times guys would come to delta state and like play and so that was that was when I first got to see like, like I said, Jasper, um, you know, Glenn and you and like just a bunch of other guys. And and I was able to, you know, for me, I was able to like, oh, okay, yeah, like, you know, like these guys can play. And um, so for me, it was I kind of, 
I, you know, I had a few people throughout my life that I looked up to and uh, kind of used for like motivation, inspiration. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I remember you coming to the gym a couple times and I was like, man, this dude is huge because I, I used to come to the games and I used to watch it. But, you yeah. know, of course, it's different when you right next to the person. I'm like, man, this dude can't yeah. be intimidated. I mean, solid, <laughs> yeah. range jumper. I'm like, oh, yeah, he definitely fine. Because you, you actually had an NBA body then. And yeah. so you know, it yeah, just man. wasn't it, it just wasn't, you know, formed, I guess you could say, you know, with the weights and all that stuff. But yeah. you had a t- in 10th grade. So I, I knew you was well on your way then, man. It just was all about the mind. And your hard work, sure. Uh, but yeah, you, sure. I knew you was definitely, definitely, definitely up there. Um, I'm gonna fast forward to uh, high school, man. Um, East Side High, old legendary East Side High, man. Yeah, um, yeah. uh, okay, so hold up, let's 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 stop at East Side real quick. Before, before, well, I ain't gonna say before, but when did you hit your growth spurt, man? Because what, how, how tall are you now? Six nine. Um, so I, I was always, man, I was always tall. Like, uh, I was always the tallest kid in my class. Like if you go to like my old pictures and like my mom's crib from elementary, like I'm, I'm super tall. Like I'm, I'm way taller than everybody. And, yeah. um, so like, I was always kind of like a tall shy kid. And because I was so tall, like I stood out and, uh, which made me naturally yeah. kind of, you know, kind of shy. Um, yeah. and so, um, I was always kind of, you know, taller than everybody. And I remember my mom, <laughs> so I remember being like sixth grade, I was probably like six three. Um, and I remember my mom like just grabbing me and just taking me to like Coach Cotton. I, I didn't even want like I didn't even want to play basketball. I was like, man, I wanna play football. Like, and she just grabbed me oh, one okay. day and just took me up to the high school gym and was like, hey, you're gonna work with my son, like just try <laughs> and, and, and coach was like, All right. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's yeah. like, all right, bring him up here. And she just yeah. threw me in there. And uh, it started. Say, say the rest is history. Yeah. yeah. Um, so your junior year, man, high school, man, uh, for those who don't know, man, um, how did that go? And um, how did y'all's uh, junior year end? So, man, my junior year was probably the best year of high school basketball I think I had. Um, and it was, man, it was like, to be honest, man, like it was a movie, <laughs> like looking back on it <laughs> at, the time, at the time I was in it, because the reason I say it was a movie, because uh, it wasn't just me. Like, it was like we had Cortavius Vaughn and like Coach Kindness son, Quay and like the Wesleys and the, like we was like a really good team. And then on top of that, um that's when I had like finally got into like the top 10 players in the country. So like the gym was packed with like Calipari and like Duke and like it was so like, like every day at school, like I go to lunch and then get out of lunch. And it's like, you know, it was like college coaches there. Like, you know, it was like, like literally, man, it was a real life movie. And then on top of that, we had like Jordan and Nike had like sponsored our team. And, you know, we were showing up to games and like, track suit and shoes and just like it was crazy <laughs> it was like it was like and honestly like <laughs> and uh it, it was yeah, it was just a movie man and like um anyway like man we wanted to win so bad that year we uh uh we got to the i think the final four of the semifinals of the state championship and we lost to kemper county uh at, on like the last second shot uh for what i remember but uh man all in all that was that was a crazy time man it was it was crazy so yeah yeah y'all 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 was loaded man you know i'm gonna say this and then we're gonna continue man now so i i stayed in uh i stayed in cleveland for like 13 years when i, when I went to okay Bell. yeah so we so if you uh i'm originally from greenwood of course but yeah, i yeah. stayed when i went to delta, when i went to delta state and then i'm i uh got me an apartment and i, I had been there for 13 years so i kind of seen you all had so much talent in basketball man like i've never seen yeah. you all i'm talking about like since i had got there in high school i mean not high school since i had got there and when i was at delta state till 
to when I end up uh, moving or whatever. Like y'all had so much time. Like y'all supposed to easily have about three or four state championships. Man. Oh man, I, oh man, easily. It, it was it was like easily, man, easily, man. It, it was like we we definitely should have a couple. Um, and you know, with that being said, man, like I always said, like although we had all that talent, man, you know who used to like, like I'm talking about make it hard. And that was oh, Shaw, Shaw, man. Shaw, yeah, I already yeah. know Shaw. We like, <laughs> Shaw. Bro, we, bro, we had all this talent, and man, we would go down to Shaw, Mississippi, and that look, and that little little old jail, man, and like, bro, you would get ran out that thing so quick, man. I'm talking like, <laughs> and they always had, they always had like one or two like little guards that just get hot and just run you out of that thing, man. They shoot you out of that quick, <laughs> yeah. and uh, they were so well coached, though, man. Like. Um, yeah. that's just, I, I just, I just got to say that. Cause like when I was coming up, like, I know we had a lot of talent and we were like really good, but like they were a little small one day school, man. They were always like, give us a run for our money. So yeah, it was crazy that way. Yeah. Shaw, Shaw had, I already knew you was going to say Shaw. I, I used to see the games when, uh, well, I, I didn't see the games. I take that back. I used to hear about the games when you played. And so I know how Shaw got, you know, they taught us player about, by six two, maybe six three yeah, at the yeah, first. Yeah. And so like I was like, well shoot, I know Johnny probably had about 40. And then I'd go talk to somebody, they were like, man, they had about three people on Johnny, man. Johnny couldn't yeah, get the ball. Yeah, and yeah. you know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, okay. And they guard used to go crazy, <laughs> crazy, man. And and another thing about our junior year too, man, that year was that like the games, the games that year was like, like I think I remember talking to Coach Cotton and he was like, like that was like record breaking for like attendance that year. Like we were like, like I remember we played. Uh, I don't know if it was Shaw or Gentry, but uh, the cars were like down, like down to like East Side Park and like right, like it was so many people, man. Like, and I just remember every game was like that, like that year. It's crazy. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, senior year man you was uh espn had you uh the number seventh power forward in the country uh 46 overall yeah. going to your senior year uh you was named dandy dozen um so how first off how was that being uh been named to the dandy dozen team you know man i'm, I'm a little salty about dandy dozen man and uh because i always i always play au with like most of my au team was just full of jackson and kind of like metro and um uh, and it took me i think i only made danny does it twice i only think it was i think it was maybe junior senior and uh yeah. because i was the highest ranked so i was the highest ranked player in mississippi like for for like regardless of class at that time and i only made like it and they would never like put me on danny does it like it and so i used to go i used to go back and forth like joking with my guy that did the danny does like man like like I'm ranked this, I'm ranked this high. Like I can't even be top in my, you know, in my in my state. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Yeah. But, uh, but no, it was it was a blessing all in all, man. It was uh, uh to make the dandy dozen is, you know, like especially coming from the Delta, man, to be, yeah. you know, in that top twelve players in the state. Um, and then you carry that on to like, you know, McDonald's All American, man. Like I, I just remember like. I just remember when I got called in the office and coach, you know, school told me. And uh when you're a kid, man, you don't really understand the magnitude of it. You know, you just kind of like a 17-year-old kid that's happy you got another award and another trophy. But as you get older, right. as you get older and like you see kids and you like, man, I'm like I'm the like I'm the first ever like McDonald's and like and, and, and I said that to say, because, like, I remember seeing, like, Jasper. And, like, I remember seeing, like, he was, like, 6'7", 6'8". He was smooth as hell. He could shoot. He could post up. And I was like, man, he's so nice. And um, and I was and I remember thinking, like, you know, like, why, why is he not, you know, why is he not, like, you know, like, because I, I didn't, Jasper was a lot older than me. So, like, I didn't, I never saw him in high school. But I remember thinking, like, you know that he kept because I was naive to be honest, like kind of growing up to everything. So, like, you know how it is from the Delta, you're not really exposed to, yeah. So, for me, like, I was like, man, he's good. I was not, 
stomach or you know whatever. And so when I look back on it, I'm just like, man, it's a blessing, like to to really you know carry that weight, and get those accolades, man. Sure. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, so senior year, man, your last year of high school, man, how did that end for you? So my senior year, man, we were we were ranked top in three A. Um, so we were supposed to, for sure, should have won that year, and we ended up losing like early in the playoffs. Um, uh, just think, I just I, I don't know. I just think the season was seemed like everybody was kind of ready to get it over <laughs> a little bit. Uh, yeah, but um, my senior year, man, it was like I said, and that that year I was playing in all those um, like the McDonald's game and the Jordan Brand, and I was getting ready for college, and so senior year was kind of like, and honestly, all of my best friends like Quay, uh, Cortavius, like like my junior year, so like those were like. Um, it was mostly just me, another cat named Nunu, and then like so uh um, we was like a close knit group. Um so it, you know, it, it was just kind of uh didn't go as planned, but in terms of me personally, like I said, I, I was able to, you know, choose my school and uh you know, playing all these these games. So it was cool. Okay, um, you spoke on uh, becoming a uh, McDonald All American. Um, you was on the team uh, with Bradley Bill. Well, well, the whole overall it was Bradley Bill, uh, KCP, yeah. Quinn Cook, and uh, mm -hmm. you played. You played against Anthony Davis. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so how how was that experience um, playing against AD and and to see where he is kind of now? But you played him when he was about one ninety. <laughs> yeah, so so AD actually, AD was actually like a late bloomer in our class. So like, I just remember, like, I didn't even hear about AD until we got to like the junior, the summer going into the same year, and everybody was like, everybody was like, like you checking the rankings, and it's like, oh, this brand, you know, like this random kid, Anthony Davis, is like number one in the country now. And uh, and I, and I, you know, everybody's kind of like, who is that? Like Anthony Davis, like, and then everybody's like, yeah. oh, he's just. He's his kid. He used to be a guard, but now he's seven feet and like he's skilled and like. So my first time actually seeing AD was at the McDonald's, the McDonald's game, and <coughs> um, and uh, I mean he obviously from right then you could tell he was just uh, really just defensively man like he was he was all over the place blocking everything he could run he could jump he could move like it was crazy. Yeah, I, th I think he. Uh... He developed offensively later on, but yeah. he was definitely uh, he was definitely skilled on the defensive end. I think that's because even when he went to uh, Kentucky, he was uh, he wasn't really offensive. Like you really didn't see his jump shot and all that stuff until he got to the NBA. Yeah. But uh, but he was just blocking shots and dunking and all type of stuff. Like so, yeah. He was and that, very that Kentucky team, my freshman year, the year they won the championship with AD, was the best college basketball team I had ever seen in my life, man. And, oh, yeah, and it was partly, because, partly because AD to what you just said, like as talented as he is offensively now, like he was basically just blocking shots and, and dunking, <laughs> you know, like, um, yeah. and, and I just remember like, I just remember one play where we played them in the SEC tournament and I was like going to score over Terrence, Terrence Jones, which was like, he was cold to it, you know? So like, yeah, yeah. I remember going to shoot over him and I'm shooting like a hook shot. I just remember out of nowhere, like I just see a big arm, a hand, like come over the top and like hands up and just swatted out of bounds. And I was just like, wow, this is crazy, bro. Like where he come from? <laughs> yeah, man. Like his like and you know, granted to see what he's doing in the NBA defensively, like he might win defensive player of the year. Like it's yeah, man, he he definitely is uh one of them ones for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um so high school season over with, man. I was college time. Uh, we all know you did um, go to LSU, uh, but I got uh, one or two questions real quick. Um, was it any other college that you wanted to go to, or you almost went to uh, besides LSU? Yeah, so, so, my, so my, my dream school was actually Michigan. Uh, I wanted to go to Michigan, man. 
and uh, and and but Michigan when recruiting, uh, they believed that I wasn't going to leave the South, which I mean they probably was right, but uh, they you know they just want to you didn't want to waste their time, I guess, man. Uh, everybody yeah. and honestly. A lot of schools thought I was locked in at either Old Miss or Mississippi State. Like they thought it was a lot, and uh, and uh, but I, I would probably say outside of that, it was either Michigan or um, I was a big fan of Georgetown too. Okay, so because they they at the time they were playing playing a lot of basketball through the big man, kind of letting them go to work. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. and they and they uh, ain't they both Jordan brand? Uh, Georgetown and Michigan. Yeah, yeah. I think Mi- Michigan used to be Adidas at that time, but they ended up switching over. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, so, what made you choose LSU? Stay just they wanted to stay in the South. Uh, not well, not, not really. So, so, two two main reasons. So, my on my AU team, two of my best friends were a class ahead of me, which was Jalen Courtney and Andre Stringer, and um, they went to LSU. And so when I took my visit on top of that, um, I was like, it's so fire down here. Like you had the football, the food, the atmosphere. And um, and it was a situation where I could come in and play like right away. Like I didn't have to like sit on the bench and like I was a situation where I could come in and play right from jump. And so uh it just all lined up, man. So yeah. Okay. So yeah, LSU now. Um, freshman year, eight points, six rebounds. Sophomore year, 13 points. Shot up 13 points. Uh, excuse me, eight rebounds. Um, junior year, um, 15 points and seven rebounds. Um, how do you? How did you feel um, your game evolved from your freshman year to your junior year? Well, my freshman year, man, I was just kind of out there hooping. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, just kind of out there hooping, man, and and and, uh, and then I end up like I end up breaking my hand, so I miss like the first month of uh, the mar- like month or two of the season. And so, um, so funny story about my freshman year. Uh, so I, I came in as like the McDonald's All American, the five star guy, you know, hoping to be one and done and all this crazy stuff. And we had this this little guard from Kentucky, man, Anthony Hickey. And, um, you know, he came in. I think he was like a two-star, something like that. And, um, man, I get hurt, and Hickey just takes, like, takes over some crazy. Like, and he's still to this day, he's overseas killer. He, like, he's one of the best guards I, I've played with. And um, I get hurt, man, and he just, like, takes all the shine. Like, he like he, en- like he ends up being, like, SC- like all SEC freshman team, like, I think he was at like 12 points a game his freshman year. Like he was going crazy. And uh yeah. and they, you know, so uh Hick, my guy, he ended up just coming in, taking all the shine, man. And uh, and then fast forward to my sophomore and junior year, uh my so freshman year, my coach gets fired. We get a new coach, and then we get an assistant coach named DP, uh um, David Patrick. And um uh, he actually was the one to teach me about analytics, teach me about percentages. Because uh, keep in mind, like I said, where we from, you know, you just hooping, man. Like, you ain't really – like, you, I mean, you work on some moves that you see, but you don't know about field goal percentage. And all. Like, so he was the one that, like, sat me down. It was like, J.O., I need, I need you to focus on, like, shooting this, this, and this from the field, like, you know, you got, this, like, you got a little skill. You got the mid range. Let's extend it to the three, and then you know you're gonna take, you're gonna take, you know, you can take one three a game, and if you hit that one, you can take another. One. Um, you know, so he was the one that kind of like, like, told me because he he used to work for the Rockets too. He used to Rockets, so he was okay. the one that kind of got me understanding what NBA teams were looking for. And so going into my junior year, I kind of knew like. All right, get your numbers, but also, uh, you know, fill the stat sheet in a way that you know it's going to get you drafted. So, okay. Um, quick question too, man. I want to ask, um, who changed your jump shot? Because I remember when you when you used to hoop at Delta State, you had the little side little shot, and then I remember yeah, yeah. you coming back 
you had the little like the little pocket shot. So what what who who changed and what made them change? Uh, I, honestly, I don't think honestly I don't think nobody I don't think nobody worked with me to change. I just think it, it naturally changed just from like okay. I think um I think it naturally changed from like just getting a lot of shots up and what felt good. Okay. Um, okay. I think once I got to college, I was able to shoot a lot more. Um, um, and I, you know, I was able to see what good shooters look like. Cause like I was able to play with like Andre Stringer and like, uh, go to these different camps and just listen to these people. And so I was like, you know, if I get it, if I get my shot here, hold a fall through flick, through. like it was just most, it's just me kind of like uh um, okay yeah yeah just kind of like getting getting reps up okay yeah because i i noticed that i remember i was like dang i remember you came to the jam and you was hitting in and out then you step back and then you hit then you uh and the jumper was a little different i was like okay so he, now, you, he you, know, you know it's crazy man I, I remember i remember uh <laughs> i remember this is a crazy story he might not even like me tell me but i remember uh so my my freshman year, I played with a guy named Jamar Harris. Um, oh, yeah, I remember Jamar. Jamar. I remember Jamar. So yeah. Jamar and Jamar was pretty good, man. He was pretty good. Um, yeah. And um, when I was a freshman, I mean, I was probably size wise, I was probably bigger, but Jamar was way better, for sure. And um, and I remember my first summer home from LSU. I think Jamar was at like. Arkansas Pine Bluff or something like that playing, or maybe it's mm-hmm. and we was playing pickup either Delta State or East Side. And I just remember like to your point when you was like uh, you know came back with all the stuff back. And I remember coming back and like and like I think Payless and like a bunch of you guys was in there. And I remember coming back and I was cooking so crazy that like they were like they was like God they was like damn J O like you didn't got like so much better dog like like just like you know what i'm saying like from the last time we seen you and i think like and i think honestly i think honestly when i tell people like when they ask me like what's the like what's the sign of like a pro it's like that you know what i'm saying like like how quickly you get better and and i'm sure like you saw like you've seen kids that like they dominate in ninth grade and by the time they're a senior everybody catches up and mm-hmm. you know yep. they never grow and now they still they can't overpower people in college and they get to college and it's just but like i think yeah. the sign of a pro is somebody that just like on every level they keep growing by the time they're a senior that is their freshman year of college they're they're better and so mm-hmm. um but yeah yeah i had to say that to that point yeah yeah now definitely yeah when you uh, when you came back it was Body wise, endurance wise, because I remember when you came before you went to college and you was you used to run down the court, you used to get a little tired, yeah. and then you used to come and you had that little, you know, that little. And then when you came back the next time, you was sprinting, pop. I was like, oh yeah, I said yeah. He, <laughs> well, they 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 got on me. He really, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a it was yeah, a total totally different. Yeah. Um. So, um, you know, junior year, man, you declare for the draft. Man, what what made you want to come out your junior year? Um, so I actually wanted to leave my sophomore year, uh, but I ended up doing like the NBA testing thing, and they were like, ah, you know, you may be like uh, second round to undraft. And so we were we weren't very good in my sophomore year, and so we had got like a really good recruiting class. We had got like three McDonald's All Americans or something like that going into my junior year so we were going to have a good team and i knew i would be able to like put up numbers so i ended up staying and uh and then i ended up I, and i just knew my junior year i was gonna leave no matter what you know because I, I was just ready to be a pro you know so right um so on june 26 2000 and, well 2014 yeah you heard the words uh with the 36 pick of the 2014 NBA draft, the Milwaukee Bucks select Johnny O'Brien III from Louisiana State University. How did that feel hearing that hearing your name on TV? And no, but first off, where were you? Uh, because I think I remember yeah. it was like a whole camera crew or some came to y'all. Yeah, so, no, like so I, I I actually um I actually I made it free for like I rented out this restaurant. It's like 
historic restaurant in, in Cleveland called the Senator's Place. Um, right. And um, have free food and really just anybody in the city that wanted to come watch, you could come watch, eat for free. And I think it ended up being packed. packed and um, Yeah, it was. <laughs> Yeah, and because was. really, really, I just wanted, I just wanted like people to see and kids to see, like, man, you know, it's possible no matter where you're from, like, you, like it could happen right in front of your face. Like, I wanted, I wanted like a kid or somebody to just see, like, like somebody you know could get drafted, like, right, right in front of you. And so that's what I did. I opened it up to the city, and um, but now, man, I, my name actually didn't get called. I got drafted doing a commercial, <laughs> commercial work. <laughs> But um, oh, but um, all in all, man, it was like I, I can't explain it, man. To to this day, it's um um to this day, man, it's one of the most fulfilled. Like like I, I cried, man. Like I held my mom and brother, and because this it's just one of them things to where like, man, you work so hard your entire life, and you go through the ups and downs, and and uh, just to for one moment to hit to hear your dream come true and like it was you know it's still to this day i don't think you know none could even come close to that so yeah um I, I know they had a whole news thing i was at work and um i worked overnight at the time and uh i know i seen they had uh you know on the news and stuff that yeah, yeah. after and all that stuff man and so i was like man that's that's what's up man i, I mean i was i i knew you of course but i was just yeah. happy because I just I knew the hard work you had put in and, yeah, and all that right. stuff, man, and how you had came up and 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 to just get that and hear that or even get the phone call or whatever the case was, yeah. I know it was I know it was big for you and for your family. So man, I was I was yeah. proud of you, bro, man. I can't even lie Appreciate to you. It, man. Um, it. Uh, October 9th, man, summer league, man. You sprain your right knee, um, and then you come back December seventeenth. Uh, you make your debut and you score twelve points against the Atlanta. F- I to say Atlanta Falcons, the Atlanta Hawks, man. How was that, man? Making your debut in the regular season and and scoring uh, twelve points, man. <laughs> man, it was it was it was cool, man. Um, it was cool, man. The NBA is so much different now than it was then. Like the NBA then was like two traditional bigs and like you know one of the bigs make a shoot a three or mid range. The other big was just big. Um. But it was cool, man. Like, um, you know, I came into a situation with Milwaukee where um, I was kind of behind. I was I was a forward at the time, um, size wise. Anyway, forward, and um, I was behind Jabari Parker and Giannis, who at the time were like so much better at like being skilled for man. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so for me. Um, my game was like, you know, I, I kind of want to say like, <laughs> it was like, I, I got, I got a chance to put up stats at LSU, but like, in some ways I always say it handicapped me a little bit because, um, it was mostly just like dump, dump the ball in the Johnny, go get a bucket, ISO. And so when I, so now when you get to the NBA and they're like, uh, float on the wing, but you're not going to get the ball unless you're spotting up for three or you're, you're back door. So like fast forward to the NBA, like I had no idea how to play off the ball at all because in high school and in college, it was like, we're going to give you the ball. And so you get so fast forward, you get to the NBA. It's like, they're like, Johnny, when the guard drives, you need to, you need to wade cut. I'm like, man, what the hell is a wade cut? <laughs> they, they like, they like, okay, you know, you're not going to shoot threes. You need to, you need to know when the back door. And you know, for me, it, it just it took it took a while to learn that, man. So it was, it, you know, it was a crazy experience. Yeah, yeah. You can say what? What's a way? But you don't, you don't really want to. I mean, you want to ask him, but you don't want to sound like how he don't know what a way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, man. And, and, and I was young, so I'm like, man, like, I, like, and a lot of times, like, it was hard, like, just trying to figure out. Because, like I said, I was behind two guys that were elite at you know, being skilled and playing on the wing and like, I mean, I've, 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 I've got it in my game now uh, from work, but like at that time, like those two guys were just way ahead. So. Right. Um, you, you spent three seasons with the books, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, three seasons with the books, uh, you with the, you went to the nuggets. 
Um, <clears throat> you went to uh, the Hornets. Uh, you was a 2017 D League All. You you made the uh, 2017 D League All Star team. Um, so and now and then you went to overseas and you've been overseas the past five years, right? Five seasons. Uh, I went overseas 2018. So, so yeah, so yeah, about five, yeah, about five, yeah. five, six seasons. Um, and you've been putting up numbers like I mean, like crazy. Uh, you win the the Euro League MV was the Euro League MVP. Yeah. Uh, um, and then you win your win your first professional championship um, in 2019. All right, I'm trying to get this name right with the the Maccabi Tel Aviv. Is that right? Yeah, Maccabi Tel Aviv. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. How, how did that feel, man? Getting getting winning your first championship, man. Professional. Man, it, it was it was crazy, man. And like to this day, Maccabi is like well, Tel Aviv is like the best city I've ever lived in in my life. Um, it's like Miami. Like it, it was crazy, man. The fans. <laughs> yeah. And um, it, it was it was fun, man. And the, that team was fun. And it was it was like, I mean, the, it was just like it was my first overseas experience, and it's probably the best one anybody could ask for for sure. So, okay, okay. Um, twenty twenty. And real quick, real quick, man. Hey, like hey, hey. He, he don't even know this, but um, it's my guy Ken Ken. Yeah, yeah, Ken Ken. Yeah. So, yeah. so the D League All Star game was in New Orleans, and. Okay. Um, I think Ken Ken and his um, girlfriend at the time, oh, wife, okay. Okay. they were um, they were down there, and um, and, and and maybe he came just to support on purpose or whatever. Yeah. And I remember running out because my my mom them came down, okay. and um, and I remember running out to play the game, and I looked up in the stands and like I seen Ken Ken, mm -hmm. and. Um, and we ended up chopping it up for a minute. And uh, that was one of the moments that, like, like he was just telling me, like, man, I'm proud of you. Blah, blah, blah. And that was one of the moments where, like, it was random, but, like, it was very um, fulfilling, man, because like, I had known Ken Ken since I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, like, and to be, like, at the All-Star game and, like, see somebody from my, my hometown that wasn't my family, like, that was actually a dope moment. You know what I'm saying? Of, right. like, Full circle moment, kind of. Yeah. Right. Was wasn't that um? Do they have that during the All Star uh, weekend, or, or was it just separate? No, it, it, it was during the All Star weekend. Okay. Uh, it was during the All Star weekend. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cause I know they they usually uh, go to like the All Star. That's why I was saying when you said his name, I was like, he it probably. I was thinking to myself, I was like, it probably was All Star weekend because I know. Yeah. They go like wherever it is, they always go. Uh, him and his cousin, yeah. they, they always always go. But uh, but yeah. So um. So okay, real quick, I was reading, doing my little research and stuff. So, I see in twenty twenty two, you were supposed to sign with the team, but they had a height requirement or something. Oh, you, you didn't? It was a height, something about the sixteen. Well, is, you know anything about? Oh, the, uh, oh yeah, in the uh, Philippines, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. saw that it was like uh, something like sixteen or something like that. And yeah, yeah, like, like they, I think it's uh, you can't be taller than like six eight or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, I was looking like what? I was like, man, that's. <laughs> um, Okay, man. Um, Never Say Die, man. The documentary, man, you did. Uh, but Never Say Die, the story of Eastside High, man. You executive yeah. produced it. Um, what made you want to do uh, a documentary about uh, your high school? So, man, Eastside, um, you know, being from like Greenwood and like these cities, man, like these schools are like, man, these schools give us so many opportunities and east side was like legendary man like the community really poured into the the school whether it be the parades whether it be the, the sports where it be just showing up for events and like like east side man like you got to think like it's one of the few places like i live in charlotte now and like you know i don't know how many my kids can go to 100 different high schools if they wanted to you know yeah, what i'm saying right. so, Right. So like, but like, East Side was a place that like, my grandmother went, and then my mom went, and all my uncles went, and then my sister went, and my brother like it was like, you know what I'm saying like like everybody knows like your family and they seen like some of the teachers taught my mom, you know, like Miss Seabury, she was a coach and teacher there. She taught my mom, you know what I'm saying. So it's it was very like very historic, yeah, historic, very like historic. Mom. Yeah, and, and and so for like to see that get like wiped out, 
I was just like, man, um, somebody needs to like. And so honestly, it started as like a, it started as like something I just wanted to do for like as as fun as for you know for fun and just kind of like you know put my own money in it and just kind of mm -hmm. see. And then like when I put out like the Facebook thing about like you know we were looking for people to interview. Man, we got flooded. <laughs> we got flooded with just so many people, and yeah. uh, and we weren't able to like realistically. I mean, it's it was weren't able to get everybody. Yeah. Uh, but um, but no, we 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 did what we could, man. And I think it it came out. I think it came out well. And uh, and really, like I said, it was just something we put our own money into, and it was just like just something for the for the city, man. If somebody wants to show their kids, like, hey, here's my school, and like. This is what it meant to the people. Like you can always go back to that, that documentary. So. Where, where where can we where can we watch it? It's online. It's, it's on our website at um at um never say die. I think it's never say die dot com or the east side. I have to look at the uh, yeah. When you website. when you um when you when you do just just uh, send it to me. I want I want to okay. watch it. Yeah, send it sure. To me. Um, three more questions, man. Then we're gonna wrap it up. Um, okay. Uh, okay, I'm gonna get this word right. Is it Neor Caesar? Yeah, Neor so Caesar. Like, yeah, Neor Caesar. So, uh, I, tell us a little bit about that, man. Yeah, so, so like I said, I, I grew up a big time fan of like animation, cartoons, comic books. Um, and so when I got to the NBA, um, again, like just as a hobby, like I wanted to create like my own like characters and comic books, and it started like just me like doing something as a hobby. And then kind of when I put it out, it kind of blew up like really fast. And uh, and then we ended up just making it a company. And uh, it's been great, man. It's been it's been great. And uh, one of my old teachers, um, he's been I've been blessed to have him as a business partner and like a brother to me now. But um, man, it's been it's been incredible. Okay, I, I see you. Um, I was reading a little bit. It's, it's your first you had first three titles. Uh, I know I'm finna mess this word up. Um, it, be it began with an X. Uh, uh, Exo Genesis, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that uh, the prime was it Primus Seven and Try Again. So that was like the first three that you're supposed to be having. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th those was like those were written and created um, a while ago, but they just came out. Uh, we pu we partnered with a publishing company, and uh, they just released the, the print copies. So. Okay, so where, where can where can we uh? Or find it or get it. At yeah, you can just go to our website, northseason.com and click on comic books, and then you'll see all the books listed. Okay, I'll, I'll make sure that uh, I get that from you. So when we do air this, I can just put a plug in for it, so you can uh, you can have it on your on your episode. Cool. cool. Uh, um, all right, man. Um, I got some wrap it up questions. Then we're gonna call it fair. Um, first things to come to mind, man, when you hear these names or places, Leroy Cotton. Uh, legend, uh, pops, um, just role model, sure. Um, Ryan Rizuki, I, I think his name Rizuki. Oh uh, yeah, right? my guy, my guy, like my first trainer, my first professional trainer. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Johnny Jones, Coach Johnny Jones. Ah, uh, just my coach, man. He was a cool coach for like two years, so yeah. All right, um, Andre Stringer. Oh, that's my guy, my best friend, uh, my road dog. Um, really, he was like one of the few people that uh, taught me to like start watching basketball from a different perspective. So, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm gonna ask you this question, man. <laughs> Every time I ask people this, they be like, "Oh man, you got me, man." But I'm gonna ask you so. Top five basketball players to come out of Eastside. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, yeah, you know um, you finna get some teams off this one. <laughs> am I am I in it or no? No, no, no. Don't can't count yourself. We know we, we okay. know you top five. We know you top five, but we we talking about, you know. Um it could be past, look, present, whatever. So so um Damn. Uh, okay. So, um, and, and I'm I'm just going off who all I seen because I didn't I didn't get a chance to see everybody. Um, Coach Cotton is one. Okay. Um, Glenn. 
Glenn Daniels. Um, top five. Top five. Jesus. Uh, Ramon Wesley's big brother. Okay. 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 Um, KJ. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's four. And then, uh, man, uh, for me, for me personally, because like he, he inspired me a lot. I'm going to say, um, I'm gonna say Dre Hilly for me. Okay. Dre, yeah. okay. But I'm probably uh, missing like Jamar and Payless and all of them. Yeah. <laughs> but I, hey man, when you when you got so much talent around, man, you know how it is, man. It's, it's all tough, good. It ain't man. like it's they ain't good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, it's we, tough, man. It's tough. Yeah. That's that's my top five though. Sure. Uh, okay. Um, so real quick, man, when uh I think you kind of touched on it a little bit. When the schools merged, man, when Eastside and Cleveland High merged, man, how how, how did that make you feel initially? Um, initially, initially, I, I didn't have a problem with the merger. It was for me, it was more so kind of the wiping away of East Side and, you know, the history of East Side, I think, um, need, needed to find a better way to preserve that. Um, and I think that it wasn't done, you know, a great way to preserve, um, the history, um, right. of East Side. And like I said, that's why we made the documentary, but I think, um, me for the merger, I think the merger was fine. I think it was for the best to give both of the kids, you know, one pool of resources and, you know, um, one pool, just one pool to, to pull from. But like I said, for me, it was just more so, you know, preserving of like the history. Okay. Uh, your top three comic book characters. Top three. Uh, I'll probably go Blade. Uh, I'll go Blade, Spawn, and then, uh, uh, Blade, Spawn, and I like Storm from X-Men. Okay. Um, so real quick, either or, um, Chris Bosch or LaMarcus Aldridge? Whoo! Uh, Bosch, Bosch. Um, Blake Griffin or Chris Webber? Sheesh. Uh, Blake. Ah, Blake, Blake, yeah, Blake. Blake. Okay. Uh, Joker or MB? Oh, man. Uh, that's so. Uh, man. I'm going to say. I'm going to say Yoke. But. Oh okay. man, that's that's tough, man. That's tough. Yeah. Uh, Westbrook or D Rose? D Rose. D Rose. Um, best advice a coach has given you? Uh, be adaptable. Um, be adaptable. Uh, be coachable. Yeah, be adaptable and be coachable. Okay. Um, toughest player you ever had to guard? Melo, Carmelo Anthony. Okay. Um, last question, man. Um, would you change anything about your journey? Man, not a thing, man. Not a thing. It's been a beautiful one. Um, you know, probably got a couple more years in me than I'll call it, but uh, it's been incredible, man. And I wouldn't change a thing. And, you know, it's like I said, it's been an honor to represent where I'm from and my family. So. Okay, cool, man. Johnny, man, I appreciate it, man. I know, I know you got some things you got going, man. I appreciate you stopping by, man. I'm gonna keep in touch with you uh, on the episode and everything, man. But hey, man, I'm happy for you. I'm proud for you, bro, man. You're doing your thing, man. You got a beautiful family, and hey, uh, man, hey, man, all the luck, to, all the luck to you, man. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you, man. Yes, sir, man. All right, man. Game over.
whole vibe on go mode. We in the session going loco. I gotta jump like a pogo. You in my frame like a photo. Go and get me, that's a no no. Every day I got a new show. Cause when I'm outside turning up, I'm going live on my GoPro. I'm spitting gang like an OG. Balling out like Ginobili.